The typewriter is the biggest and most complicated prop I built so far, but it serves a very important purpose in order to frame the human main character as a pedantic bureaucrat. Also, I might have way too much fun with all that mechanical pieces. I started the design process with the keys. They were a bit challenging to get right and definitely are the most striking feature of the entire typewriter. So I started from there and went on step by step without having a complete plan from the beginning. I ended up using small brass rivets for the outer ring of each key and attached them to a piece of round stock with some wire soldered onto it. The letters were just printed out and glued into the center of each key. The spacebar on the other side had to be handcrafted from scratch, so it ended up looking a bit different from the other keys. After all keys were prepared, I constructed a bunch of comb-like pieces to serve as hinges for each key.
Each row is assembled independently and is then screwed onto the mainframe of the machine. The finished keyboard basically defined the scale for all the other parts of the machine. The next challenge was the construction of the ring with all the type levers. Here I made use of a new tool I recently bought, a rotary table which allows me to turn workpieces in precise increments. In contrast to the keys, the type levers won't have real hinges, instead they are loosely inserted into small holes. The illusion of movement in the final animation will be created by switching out the levers for different versions. This is called replacement animation and works best for fast movements where you don't need many states. Next up was the most challenging part I machined so far, the outer resting plate for the type levers. It's an inner cone with slits for each key stamp, but the slits have to be angled outwards to each side. It's really hard to describe, but after giving it a lot of thought I figured out how I could manufacture this piece, simply by using two centers of rotation for different working steps. The parts for the top carrier of the typewriter were much more straightforward to manufacture, so I made them off screen. Time for the first assembly.
Now only the ink ribbon and the housing are missing. I machined two tiny wheels for the ink ribbon and a brass frame to hold them, which can move up and down with each key press. For the ink ribbon itself, I ended up using a piece of an old cassette tape. Here I actually cheated a bit, because the two wheels turn independently and the ink ribbon isn't actually wound onto the wheels, but instead is just glued on. The up-down movement of the assembly is controlled by two screws, which act against small springs from old roller pens. At last I crafted the wooden frame pieces and added some decorative non-functional elements to them. Time for a test. Because all the different parts of the typewriter aren't actually connected mechanically, it's the animator's job to move everything accordingly in order to create the illusion of a real typewriter. There are so many moving parts on this prop, I actually needed a checklist for the animation to not forget anything. While most of the parts can be animated by moving them physically, the type levers work with replacement animation. Each lever exists in three stages and can be switched out with small pliers. And here's the first animation of the typewriter in action, as it was seen in the trailer. Thank you very much for watching this video and uh, if you liked this little glimpse into the production of an unwound clockwork, please subscribe to the YouTube channel to stay informed and maybe check out the Patreon page to become an active supporter like these awesome people. Thank you very much. And there are some exclusive rewards for each tier on Patreon.